Um, now we're going to look at writing uh, expressions or writing equations for velocity or for position and how they, they change as a function of time. Uh, now the equations that we're going to be use, uh, using here were originally derived using calculus, but they're just algebraic equations, so whether you've had the calculus or not um, you know, is, uh, is irrelevant here. So we assume in these equations that acceleration is a constant value. And so if acceleration is not constant, then the equations we're going to use here are, uh, are not valid. There would be extra terms that we would have to include in, in those. Now, for, uh, for our purposes, these will all be constant acceleration problems if we choose our time limits carefully. So, for example, if we have, say, a, a rock that's being thrown upward and it's going to fall down toward the ground from, say, the top of a cliff, the moment we let go of that rock, uh, the only force that would be acting on it is gravity pulling downward. And, you know, air resistance would be a factor generally, though we tend to ignore that um, in these problems. So we say the effect of air resistance is small enough that we can just call it zero. So gravity is what acts on it, pulling it along this curved path, and we'll get into this more later on. Um, but as soon as that object hits the ground, well, now we have the ground that's affecting its motion as well. And so it was accelerating downward, getting faster and faster in its downward motion. When it hits the ground, it's going to accelerate upward uh, with a very fast, uh, very, very rapid upward acceleration to bring it to rest when it hits the ground. Uh, so from this moment to the moment when it's at the rock, or at the, at the ground rather, um, the acceleration changes. So we can use all these expressions only for the time immediately after the rock is released to the time immediately before it hits the, the bottom or the, the floor of this, uh, this cliff area. Um, so if we choose our time intervals carefully, then we can make sure that, that this assumption works for us. So if acceleration is constant, then the velocity at some moment in time is going to be the starting velocity, v naught plus the rate at which velocity changes, acceleration, times the amount of time that elapses um, while that acceleration is changing. So if acceleration is constant, then velocity is going to change at a constant rate. This is a linear equation in terms of, uh, in terms of t. Uh, and then the position we can figure out um, by, by integrating this, if you're familiar with calculus. So um, all we did for, uh, for acceleration was we integrated this function to get uh, uh, to our velocity function. We integrate one more time, we get to our position function. If you don't know about integration, again, that's fine. You don't need to. We, you know, someone else has already done the, the calculus for us. Isaac Newton did that for us, so we don't need to, uh, to do it again. Um, so the position function is going to be the starting position, x0, plus the starting velocity times the amount of time that elapses over this interval, plus 1 half times the acceleration times the square of the time that elapses over this, this interval. Um, so this is a quadratic function in general. Um, now, we, we might have special cases with, uh, with each of these. So let's consider those possibilities. So first off with velocity. In general, we're going to have uh, we're gonna have a linear uh, a linear relationship, a linear v versus t graph. Uh, if the uh, if the acceleration is positive, positive acceleration, then our velocity versus time graph will look something like this. We have a straight line going up and to the right. If we have negative acceleration, then our velocity versus time graph will look something like this. We have a, you know, a negative uh, slope on this line. Maybe it goes through the, the zero, maybe not. And if we have zero acceleration, then our graph of uh, v versus t 
is just some constant unchanging value here. So if acceleration is zero, this term drops out and we just get V equals V naught, which is a constant value for us. Okay. And then uh, on these graphs, this value would be V naught, and this value here would be V naught. And this value would be V naught. For the position graphs, rewrite here, so position, uh, so x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Um, in general, this is a quadratic function, so um, in general we're going to have a parabola. for our x versus t graph. Um, and then the, the different cases for this will, will influence the, um, the shape of, uh, of the parabola and the, the orientation of it. So if we say um, x naught is not zero and v naught is not zero, and acceleration is positive, positive acceleration, uh, then our graph of position versus time is going to be some kind of a parabola like this. Um, a parabola that's concave upward. It has the open end um, facing up. Um, so that's just uh, you know a, a factor of uh, having the, the square term have a positive uh, positive value there. So after some amount of time, the square term is always going to win out. So if we have a positive a times our squared term, then eventually we're going to have our graph start to increase. Um, and then if we have, uh, uh, have a case where uh, a is negative, so x naught, really we don't even have to make these uh, these assumptions. Um, so we describe this one as concave up. And then if we have a negative A for our x versus t graph, we're going to have some kind of a concave down parabola. Okay. Now, what if we have acceleration is zero? Acceleration is zero. Now we have, for x versus t, when acceleration is zero, this term just drops out, and we have x naught plus v naught t. That's just a linear graph. So we might have something like this, where this is x naught. We might have something like this, where this is x naught. Or if we have acceleration equals zero and velocity initial equals zero, then our graph of x versus t, now this term drops out, is just going to be a straight horizontal line at a position of x naught. Okay, so we can have uh, you know a few variations still. Um, on the acceleration here as far as where on the parabola we start at a time of zero, but you know these are the, the general way that these graphs are going to look. So for this, this learning target we need to be able to pick out or to create graphs that show uh, either the velocity or the position as a function of time. So always go back to these two equations and then plug in you know, at least uh, whether these values are positive, negative, or zero for a, v naught, and x naught to get the general shape for these things.